probably very familiar with. It is a, a young shepherd boy who has been called, if you will, to stand against a trial that perhaps the rest of the world didn't want to stand up to. It was a situation where God's people were actually going to be in danger, and yet it was the young shepherd boy uh, who had the least amount of wisdom, who had the least amount of experience, but he recognized something that no one else would recognize. He would gaze across a field, and he would stare at a giant that was over nine feet tall. This giant was known to be a great warrior. This giant was known to cause death and destruction. This giant was well known within the area of just bringing turmoil just by his presence. And yet you have this young shepherd boy, the one that God would later on say that was a man after his own heart. This would be a man who would eventually gain the experience that he need, that he would rise up and be a king of God's nation. And although he wouldn't serve perfectly, he would serve faithfully. He would be mentioned later on in Hebrews chapter 11 as that one who would go down in history as continuing to turn his face back toward God. The question I ask you, and I ask myself, what brought him to that state of faithfulness? I think the answer is actually found in verse 29 of this passage. Of this chapter, after everything has been on display, after all the threats have been made, after everybody had already made their peace with themselves that they were not going to wander out into this field against such a giant. David has these words in verse 29. Verse 29 says, what have I done now? In other words, he looks at his brother and perhaps because of his mischievousness, because a lot of times they really couldn't keep up with him going from field to field, tending after his father's sheep. David brings back the response. Is there not a cause? Is there not a cause? They saw a giant and saw death with just within inches. He sees a giant and sees life. They see a giant and they see pain and destruction. He sees giant and he sees something to overcome. They look out and see a giant of which they cannot win, he sees a giant that's just another step toward victory. Have you ever come across something that you have to be convinced that it's a worthwhile cause? Sometimes we have missionaries, they will come into congregations and they'll tell you about their work. And when they first came in the door, you go, you know, we'll let him have his time. We'll, we'll let him say what they're going to say. And then, then you know, we'll, we'll, we'll bid them Godspeed and, and let them go on home. And then they unpack all of their stuff. And then they, they show you all the good work is being done. Maybe preachers are being trained. Maybe, maybe just maybe some, some people are being converted. Maybe some of those people that are being converted go on to be be preachers and Bible class teachers and and so on. Maybe it's one of the situations where maybe even an orphanage is established that that these young people can be taken out of out of homelessness and be brought in and cared for and fed. When he came in the door, you had no reason to even consider supporting such, but now there's a cause. You had to be convinced that it was worthwhile. Then you opened your pocketbook, and then you're able to support it. Sometimes congregations will go and they'll, they'll 
try to start something new. It might be an evangelistic program. Sometimes these evangelistic programs will be from the, from the standpoint, this is something we've done before. Didn't work then, won't work now. We'll bring a person in and he'll give us a new idea, maybe a new, a new way of life, and he'll breathe some fire into this thing to, uh, to, to allow us to see his energy and maybe we'll, we'll take a breath of that energy and it, it causes us to rise up. But, but when he first came here, evangelism is just what it was. It, it was someone else's job and... It, it, and we pray that that individual will do their job and then all of a sudden we see what can be done and we start saying, is there not a cause? We see the giant of the world out here that needs the gospel and suddenly the world doesn't look so big. We see the power in the word of God and suddenly it doesn't seem so difficult. We see the power that goes on when there's strength in numbers that, that we're working at this together and suddenly we see that we can be victorious, not in the amount of baptisms that we have, but the effort and the love and the compassion that we have toward maybe that particular program. After David had made this statement, is there not a cause? He was looked at like he was a fool. And even Saul would tell him, King Saul would tell him that he wasn't old enough, he wasn't strong enough, he didn't have really what it takes. But notice, if you will, if you'll jump over to verse number 32, David's response to him. And David said to Saul, let no man's heart fail because of him. He looked out here, Saul was seeing a giant, David's brothers were seeing a giant, and he says there's no reason for our hearts to fail. Actually, the word here is probably there's no reason for our hearts to fear what we can overcome. In other words, there's no reason to sit here. There's no reason to stay here on the sidelines. We've already established there's a cause. Here's danger. We've got to protect ourselves. You can look at it at one or two ways. You can look at that giant as a hindrance, or you can look at that giant as an opportunity. What's it going to be? We understand what David did because we know the rest of the story. We love telling that story, don't we? We line kids up at vacation Bible school. We line them up in our Bible classes and we take them and sometimes we'll even have a slingshot. Sometimes we'll reach in our pocket and we'll pull out those five stones and we look and said, that's all we have right here. And the biggest man in the land went down simply because of a shepherd boy who had a cause. Think about the Luxahoma congregation for just a minute. I don't know, maybe I should be preaching this on Sunday morning. Seems like sometimes our attendance is, is more on Sunday mornings. Maybe more people need to hear this. Maybe my timing's just bad. What's our cause? Did God give us one? It's a congregation, that's easy to see. We could run to the Great Commission in Matthew 28, Luke chapter, or Mark chapter 16, Luke 23. We, we, we understand the words to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. We understand that. That's a great cause. But that, see, that cause really, if you stop and think about it, as authoritative as it is, as imperative as it is, you know, that... That cause is really just some words on a piece of paper. Do you know that? It's just words on a piece of paper. Just like that giant was out in the field. He's just a giant in the field. See, the brothers chose to ignore him. He's just a giant out there. We, he's been out there for a long time. 
They're just words on a piece of paper until you make it your cause. Just like an evangelism program within a congregation is just a way to organize evangelism, whether it's a visitation program within the congregation, it's just an organized way to do these things. The question is, are you going to make it your cause? It, does this some, is this something that means something to you? And, and we understand that some people will say, no, it, it doesn't mean anything to me. Okay, then that, that's something for which you can go and stand. And nobody's going to be critical. You can go and stand with David's brothers. Okay? Nobody was critical of them. Or you can stand with a man who was going to be king. Now, here's something to make it even more difficult. Who's the king sitting upon his throne today? You could say it out loud if you want. Uh, Jesus is sitting on, on his throne. He's king of kings, Lord of lords. You can go stand with the brethren who sees the giant or you can go stand with the king. That's your choice. Not trying to be critical, not trying to be negative. It all comes down to one thing. Either this is a cause you believe in or it's not. This is not the only congregation in existence that struggles with these things. This is not the only congregation who has not challenged themselves. It's not the only congregation where a preacher has stood up and some people have even uh, have, have accused him of, of, of filing a grievance. It, 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 we're not the only ones. It's just things that we struggle with. I would dare call it life. The Christian life. But at the end of the day, we all need a cause. At the end of the day, we're all going to stand next to the king. Whether we had a cause or not. And because of that cause, that's going to determine our labor, our efforts, our knowledge and our eternal home. What's your cause? Is your cause to take up the banner of truth and help others get to heaven as well as yourself? Or is your cause to stand with the brethren who sees a giant? If there's another cause, I don't know what it is. It seems like those are the two. And I'm sincerely asking if I can encourage you, stand with the king because he's at the right hand of the Father. And that's where we want to eventually be. If I can encourage you, I would look at everything written in the scriptures about who we're supposed to be as more than words on a piece of paper. And if I can encourage you, there is not a giant in this universe that's bigger than my God. So let me encourage you. Find your cause. Get your stones. Stand with the king. Because that's the only place victory will be had. This afternoon, if you've never obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ, you can do that. The water of baptisms are, 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 is ready. 
be glad to take you and immerse you for the remission of your sins, Acts 2 and verse 38. If it, if it is that you're a child of God, a Christian who, who, who has sinned or wandered away from God, uh, sometimes we call it drifting away, wandering away. If we have done that, God allows us to come home through repentance and prayer, Acts 8, verse 22. And you know why we come home? Because there's a cause. Let that be yours today. As together we stand.